So Europe is, is in transformation. Um, part of the Recovery and Resilience Fund is, is focused precisely on change. It's not just about uh, reviving um, the, the continent's uh, economy. It's about transforming it, shifting it, changing it. Um, but of course, into the mix, we've got this, uh, um, this Russian invasion of Ukraine and the geopol geopolitical crisis that's arisen as a result of that. Um, is that going to hurt the plans for this European digital decade? Are the 2030 targets safe? I think personally that it's more imperative than ever that uh, Europe pursues uh, its digital decade targets. Um, the pandemic has already shown us uh, the vital importance of having digital sovereignty. And unfortunately, with the devastation of the war right now, um, this digital sovereignty is going to be critical for Europe's strategic autonomy on many critical for, um, topics. And what is under going to pin that is the um, critical infrastructure building. And as we know, Europe is significantly lagging behind today in terms of 5G networks, uh, gigabit networks. Um, today, only 2.4% of the connections are 5G. And this, is, this compares to 15% in US, 30% in China. And the gap is widening as we speak. So we have to take very robust actions to execute fast. Otherwise, Europe is going to basically going to take, become, take the risk of becoming a bystander in the global transformation. And, um, and the opportunity of the digital technologies is huge. The European Commission has uh, issued a report on the potential saying that if we pursue the digital decade targets, the uplift to the economy is about 2.2 trillion GDP ups, upside, mm -hmm. and this is significant. So um, we really have to get going, and we need to start executing much faster than we have been doing. The current trajectory shows that we would only reach 60% of the targets in terms of infrastructure in the next decade, and, uh, and that's going to be 10 years after where China is today. Right. Um, thank you. you. You raised the, uh, the concept of digital sovereignty, which I find uh, fascinating because one of, the, you know, one of the underlying foundational principles of the digital world is that it, it operates beyond borders. You, know, you don't need to put your letter on a ship and send it to a port and have it delivered by lorry to somebody else. It flies um, through the ether, as it were. Uh, and yet we have this concept of digital sovereignty, which again suggests we have to put up borders, we have to put up barriers in the way of data. There's a, obviously a tension there. How do you work through that tension so that we still get the very best outcomes at the end of it? Well, first of all, we need really resilience, secure proof, advanced technologies, and uh, 5G is critical for that. Um, as we uh, deal with this globalization, we need to also be mindful about the potential risks that are increasing, especially in the cybersecurity space. And that's going to be, uh, that's, that will require companies like us to really um, build resilience uh, security actions. And we as Vodafone actually have a very robust system. We have more than 800 employees working on cybersecurity uh, specifically. And I emphasize that 5G, with its low latency, is also important in order to create this resilient infrastructure. Uh, great, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we have another contrast, another kind of uh, oddity, which is that we look to technology and we look to the digital um, transformation as a way of raising productivity and of increasing growth and giving us you know, the burst of growth that the, the, uh, the world and Europe uh, in particular is, is looking for. Um, and yet, 
as we look around, uh, we see shortages of, of basic uh, inputs for, for industry and for our economies, uh, largely as a result of the crisis in, in Ukraine. Um, and so that seems to be operating against, that seems to be a real headwind against the, uh, the progress that, that digital adoption could give us. Uh, where do you think we stand on, on that? What's the um, challenge that faces the sector, your, your company in particular if you like, but the sector in general in confronting this, this new wave of, of, um, of headwind? Well, uh, our sector has been really uh, pursuing a significant investment program. In the last decade, um, approximately 500 billion uh, has been spent on, in Europe on, on creating the capacity uh, to meet the demand. And uh, the demand, as we speak, is increasing about 50% every year. So the data traffic is increasing. And we have seen in the pandemic also there has been a surge of demand, both on mobile and fixed. 50% 50 data traffic every year, which is the so, key indicator. So that's some way ahead of more. Which is the key indicator for our investments every year. Yeah. And during the pandemic, during the surge of uh, demand for fixed and mobile networks, the industry, the sector, has really coped well. We have been able to cater that demand through additional investments. But there are a couple of issues that we need to really address going forward because it is our responsibility that the citizens have access to, to take part in the digital society. So we need to cater for that data traffic demand. Uh, but the first anomaly is that 70% of this data traffic is used for services like video streaming, social media, gaming, which actually is provided by a few big digital service companies, content companies, that actually um, do hyperscale the business models with very little cost, and we as the operators need to shoulder the whole ex you know, investment for these networks. Mm. So there needs to be a fair share of um, allocating this cost going forward, such that all the actors in the market um, participate and contribute to the cost. And, um, and there are some other regions outside of Europe are started to tackle this issue. Example in Korea, um, there is a new so-called Netflix, Netflix law, which requires uh, big digital content companies uh, to take some part of the additional cost that is caused, that is imposed on the networks because of their services. Or in the US, there's a broad range of companies that will be taking part on the universal service obligations. I mean, there are mechanisms that I think in Europe we need to start looking at with the governments and we are very re you know, ready to explore together. Uh, we are very pleased that in the, uh, digital, the recent EU digital rights and principles, there's an acknowledgement that this, there should be a fair sh share of the cost uh, taken by all the actors in the market. So this is one. The second thing is, of course, the uh, public uh, support on the funding side is going to be very important. There needs to be a, a broader co collaboration between public and private sector uh, to encourage um, the investments. And I think in that aspect, the recovery funds are very important. They play a very important role. And the third component is we need to look at the fragmentation of the market in Europe particularly. In Europe we have more than 100 operators and the average customer base of, is about 4.4 million customers. And this compares to 95 million in the US, 400 million in China. Mm. So you, we need to encourage and the, we need a policy that encourages more the consolidation in the sector so that there could be, you know, the companies can really scale and afford the investments going forward. The hyper-fragmentation is not helpful. And also in some of the markets, what we're seeing is the high auction fees and the spectrum fees are also not encouraging. Uh, and they're also causing some unsustainable new entrants to the market, which is going against the consolidation. 
uh, I must call out that you know Greece is a very good example of how you know an auction, the spectrum auction, the government has done it in a very record speed with very favorable pro-business, pro-investment uh, perspective, and we should we would like to see more of that. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Um, you you mentioned this. Uh, 50% increase in, in data traffic uh, a year, which is an astonishing uh, statistic. Do you have a projection on, on how that's likely to evolve over time? Is it going to speed up? Is it going to slow down? Is it going to remain constant? And for how long? Well, I mean, the digitization is definitely fast forwarding uh, post the pandemic and we see more of inclusion of digital services. And I would say with the recovery funds, uh, which some of it uh, in Europe on average 20-25% will go into digitalization, um, be it uh, digitalization of the SMEs or public sector. I would probably, uh, it's, it's probably realistic to expect that the data traffic will increase even further than this rate. Uh, thank you. That's, 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 uh, um, uh, that's quite a prospect uh, and very interesting. Uh, you mentioned cybersecurity, so I want to finish on, on uh, just briefly on, on a question about cybersecurity. I mean, the uh, events in Russia and, and Ukraine have, have really underlined the importance once again of securing uh, our data. Um, where, where are we on that? And, and do you feel that, um, that the sector is ready, is keeping up with the requirements being put upon it? My company is taking a lot of actions. We have really heightened our um, security monitoring, risk monitoring, uh, very conscious of the sophistication of where this is going. And, uh, and it's a constant work that we need to keep working on. It is a matter of critical importance and priority, uh, I believe, for the whole sector. And uh, especially for my company, we're, we're really taking it very seriously given, um, given the developments. Is there any implication from, from the shift in you know, the, some of the new technologies that are being adopted? You mentioned 5G, for example. Um, does the game change in cybersecurity? So do we, is it, it's not just a matter of keeping up with a sort of uh, a, an increasing trend. There are new things happening that mean new responses need to be developed. Cybersecurity cyber is a topic which you need to really keep developing all the time, I would say, because uh, um, this is a very sophisticated matter, uh, but what is important is also we need to have the, apart from the whole monitoring of the security systems, we need to make sure that we have the technology and 5G with low latency is a, an important um, enabler for, for you know, better coping with cyber uh, threats. Okay, that's fabulous. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Timurai. That's, uh, we have such a short time, so much we could talk about, but I'm very grateful to you for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.